to my Sea of Thieves Safer Seas information video. Let's talk about what you can and cannot do on the Safer Seas servers. Before we begin, let's watch the trailer for Safer Seas and see if they offer us any insights. Players now have the option to set sail on Safer Seas, giving you more choice over your experience and allowing you to play Sea of Thieves how you want. Safer Seas is a new mode which will enable you to play Sea of Thieves on a single crew server. This means that apart from you and up to three additional friends that you could choose to invite, there will be no other players in the world with you. The existing mode, where you play in a shared world filled with other players, is... Before we continue, I'd like to say within this video will be my opinions to Safer Seas which are 50-50. If you disagree with some of my ideas, I completely understand these are merely suggestions for on Safer Seas. I'm going to start off with some of the world events you can do, but first of all I'm just going to show you how you actually get into Safer Seas. So you do have all of the what's new information on Safer Seas on your intro page. Once you click play, it will offer you two options. The first one will be high seas. The second one will be safer seas, which is what you're going to see me show you in just a moment. There is the launch trailer, which you'll see me hovering over there, which is the one we've just seen. But in terms of loading up the game, you click on play in one moment and it will show you all of the different options you have. So clicking on play, clicking on adventure, it will then give you the two options of high seas and safer seas. You want to load safer seas and you'll have to have a standard ship. In this case, I chose a sloop. A couple of things to bear in mind with safer seas. You only get 30% gold earnings for handing in loot. So to put that into concept, in an Ashen Wind Skull, you get 10,000 gold. You will see me sh sell that skull in this video, but you would usually get 10,000 gold in normal seas and in safer seas you get roughly 3,333 which is what you are going to see me do in just a few moments. Within safer seas there are various world events you can do the first one being the ashen winds which your ashen winds is a red tornado as it always has been it starts off with the little ritual and then when you complete the ashen winds which is what you're going to see me do in just a moment you end up with all of the loot. Now we did end up selling just a couple of the loot items because I wanted to show you how much they actually sold for which is what you are going to see in a moment. We collected the chest of rage and the ashen wind skull. Those were the only two items we wanted to pick up on this particular occasion just to show you how much they are worth when you sell them. The chest of rage and the ashen wind skull are the two items you can see us taking to the outpost here. My wonderful other player donks is going to sell the chest of rage which usually you would get between five and six thousand for we believe off the top of our heads and in safer seas you only get 957 i could be wrong with those figures but this is what the game showed us the ash and wind skull as i said earlier you get 10,000 for in normal game but you only get 3,000 in safer seas the next world event it will let you do is a skull fort, which is what you're going to see here. Now, the only difference with a skull fort, once you've completed it, is there are various digs that you would usually have. These digs would usually include things such as the rag and bone crate, which aren't available in safer seas. There are a few other items not available in safer seas, which I'm going to read out for you in just one moment. But the one thing I do find interesting about safer seas is... The, there are certain things that you cannot find but there are also various voyages and events you cannot do. In terms of loot in Safer Seas you cannot get a Skull of Destiny, a Chest of Fortune, a Reaper's Chest, a Reaper's Bounty, a Ritual Skull, a Generous Gift, a Humble Gift, a Rag and Bone Crate and all of your Ashen Chest tombs will also be unavailable. You can get the Ashen Chests and Keys because they have gold bags, doubloon bags and they do also hold the Ashen Trinkets but they will not have any of the Tomb Books so if you wish to do that as a commendation you cannot do that in Safer Seas. In terms of what you can do on Safer Seas you can also do some other items as well as your world events. You can work on Tall Tales which is I know, I know what quite which is something I know that a lot of people are going to try and do. 
So you can complete tour tales on Safer Seas and you can do some voyages on Safer Seas. The one thing you cannot do is raise an emissary flag is something we have learnt. So what I'm going to do at the end of this video, I will kind of give you a bit of a list of the things you can and can't do so that you are aware. But within Safer Seas, you cannot raise any of your emissaries. There are no Fort of the Dams. There are no Forts of Fortune. You cannot raise an emissary, but you can be megged and you can be krakened. I'm going to move on to my top tips for Safer Seas. Now, one of my top tips is to use Safer Seas to do any fishing commendations you have because you will not be interrupted by any other player ship so you can collect as many fish as possible and you can go and sell as many fish as you would like to. My other suggestion is to work on commendations. Now, various commendations will not be available. You will have to load up Safer Seas and check which commendations you still need. Anything Athena and Reaper related you will not be able to do on Safer Seas, but you can do various Merchant Voyages, Order of Souls Voyages and Gold Hoarder Voyages. I believe there are only one or two in each of those you cannot do on Safer Seas. My third suggestion is Tall Tales. If there are any Tall Tales you need to do, there is opportunity to do those within Safer Seas. So if you are in need of doing any of your Tall Tales, please feel free to try and do them on Safer Seas. The last thing that I do not know the answer to is whether you can do adventures on Safer Seas. So if anybody finds that out in the future, I will try and let you know an update. But in terms of anything else I need to tell you, you can do the following world events and I'm going to just list them in order. You can have Skelly Fleets, Skull Forts, Ashen Winds and you can also have Flame Heart but we're not sure about whether the cursed cannibals hitting other ships is going to count. In terms of voyages, I know you can definitely get a ghost fleet voyage. You can do any of your vaults, you can do any of your merchant voyages. The only merchant ones you cannot do will be your stolen commodity crates because there isn't another crew to steal them off. You will not be able to take normal normal merchant crates, sorry, commodity crates to anybody else because they're not possible to raise an emissary so you cannot gain access to them. I hope this video was helpful, I hope you enjoy Safer Seas and I will see you all very very soon. Bye for now. Just wanted to do a very quick summary for Safer Seas. So the first thing to note is the world events you can do, the ones available, Ash and Wind, Skull Fort, Skelly Fleet, Flame Heart. The ones not available is your Fort of Fortune and Fort of the Damned. The treasures that don't appear in Safer Seas are the Athena's Fortune Treasure, Skull of Destiny, Chest of Fortune, Reaper's Chest, Reaper's Bounty, Ritual Skull, Generous Gift, Humble Gift, Rag and Bone Crate and all of your tombs. Things to note is, suggestion wise, you can do fishing, tour tales, commendations, possibly adventures, but you have to remember you only get 30% money for your loot. 